The claim that the universe is a Tesla coil sounds ridiculous and sensational on its face. I'm not jumping the shark here. It takes some explaining, but by the end, I intend to prove it mathematically. This is a thought experiment, backed up by relativity, quantum physics, and solid mathematics in a literal way and not a metaphorical one. See if you can disagree with my QED. So here goes. In Physics by Aristotle, we can read about Zeno's paradox of the arrow. It is a mind-bending way to see motion. I'm no scholar of Greek history, but this is the way I understand it. Imagine an arrow shot from a bow. That arrow, after it is launched from the bow, will occupy the entire space between the bow and the target for the duration of its transit, one moment and one place at a time. It will occupy a discrete set of space-time coordinates in order as it travels. How many discrete states does the arrow occupy during that transit? If it occupies infinite discrete states, how does it ever move forward? It would have to travel an infinite distance over a finite line. For it to travel a finite distance in a finite time, there must be finite discrete states. And even if there's a lot of them, there's a finite amount or the arrow would never leave the bow. And just like the difference between two frames of film, the subtle instantaneous motion of the subjects of the frame must jump from one state to another abruptly. There must be some minimum amount of motion between frames, so to speak, in which the arrow must jump from one place to another in a finite amount of separate coordinate changes with nothing in between them. This would mean that if you had a camera with a high enough frame rate, there would be some frames where the arrow didn't exist. We would call time, then, the amount of discrete changes of state an area of space has undergone from the perspective of an observer who perceived a change of state. So the first thing this instantly made me think is, does the universe have a frame rate? So given that there has to be a discrete number of states between each frame of the universe, how do you measure the change in each frame? And what happens in between frames? Well, when a frame in a digital rendering changes, it means every pixel in the frame changed. The smallest unit of change in a digital frame of animation is a pixel. Pixels are the single dots that make up the image. Well, what is a universal pixel? To figure this out, we have to figure out the smallest amount of change that can possibly be measured and quantified. How do we discover what we might call the pixels of the universal frame, and what is the pixel size of the universe? I think that science actually inadvertently may have discovered the identity of a universal pixel, whether they realize it or not, or whether that was their intention. I was reading about Maxwell's equations the other day, and I came across this odd little definition of the speed of light c squared equals 1 over mu naught epsilon naught. So let's get rid of that nasty square taking the root of both sides, and what do we get? c equals 1 over the root of mu naught epsilon naught. And when I saw this, I was greatly amused because I had seen it before. It's an equation everyone who knows Tesla's work will recognize. In electronics, a simple tank circuit is a resonator. It's a capacitor and an inductor coil hooked together so that when the capacitor charges up enough, it'll discharge through the inductor, creating a magnetic field. Energy must be conserved, and when the charge is all used up and the magnetic field is at maximum strength, the field starts to collapse. The flux of the field collapsing creates a current which charges the capacitor and starts the oscillations all over again. A Tesla coil is basically two inductively coupled tank circuits. They are coupled resonant oscillators. The equation to define their resonant frequency is this. Omega naught equals 1 over the root of LC. L is the value of the inductor's inductance, measured in a unit called Henry's, or basically how big a magnetic field it'll make. The C is the capacitance, or power, that the capacitor can hold in farads. Resonance occurs when an LC circuit is driven from an external source at an angular frequency, omega naught, at which the inductive and capacitive reactances are equal in magnitude. The frequency at which this equality holds for the particular circuit is the resonant frequency. The resonant frequency of the LC circuit is omega naught equals 1 over the root of the inductance and the capacitance LC. So this is what it looks like when phrased in hertz, but angular frequency will suit our needs just fine here. If you look at them side by side, realizing the value of mu naught and epsilon naught, you realize that these are actually the same equation. 
The Greek variables in 1 defining the speed of light are the values of the inductance and capacitance of free space in a vacuum. They are the L and the C of the universe. The units are almost identical too. This equation defines the universal pixel in terms of fixed values of L and C. So if we take this out further, remembering that E equals MC squared, let's square this guy and we end up with C squared equals 1 over mu naught epsilon naught again. Now let's try and substitute just for fun and see what we get. We end up with E equals M over mu naught epsilon naught. So let's work a test of this. And, and try that relation out. Let's say for m equals one kilogram of mass. The end result of the equation is numerically what it would be if you used c squared instead. But this equation seems to mean something different. This equation implies that mass is divided by the values of inductance and capacitance. So it would seem to suggest a single pixel of space is defined by the amount of space required to possess these specific values of inductance and capacitance. Free space is made up of a specific number of small, discrete units of space which possess equal values of inductance and capacitance. That would mean that the universe was in fact made up of a finite number of points, no matter how large that number may be, and that those points each have something in them which allows them to resonate just like a tank circuit. This would seem to suggest that the universe is simply a finite number of coupled resonant LC circuits. The universe is simply one big Tesla coil.